My name is Preston Juneman. I am in the Precision Ag Consultants Group, and I'm out of the Imperial Nebraska location. Today I'm excited to be standing in front of the S7-700 Combine. We had an S7-700 and an S7-800 that we demoed throughout our AOR. And basically what I'm talking about today is those advanced technologies using the forward-looking cameras and the satellite imagery to give us that predictive ground speed automation. You're used to the reactive systems in the past, and today we're moving to a predictive system so that we know what the throughput going through that machine is gonna be before we get there. So we had some really good demos and some really good feedback from customers who consider themselves to be very advanced combine operators. So that was good to see for the takeaways that we found. We're getting increased capacity. We're getting increased throughput, which gives us our increase in productivity. We're also seeing cleaner grain samples, better, higher quality grain samples, and less loss. And usually in the past, you get kind of give and take to get each of those to kind of jive for your operation or whatever fits for your operation. To get all three with this combine is a statement to what the advanced technologies can do on your farm. Through our demos, we noticed a 20% productivity increase and also a 10% increase in fuel efficiency while doing that. So we're running at a more optimized level with the machine. We're hitting our peak performance all throughout the day and we're not limited on our operator for any of that. This technology is able to be utilized on any size operation. So whether you're a, you're a mom and pop farm of say 1500 acres or you're a large scale operator of 10,000 acres, these technologies help you get more out of your acres, get more out of the field every day and just be more efficient uh, and sustainable. I'm Eddie Tilton. I'm a precision ag consultant out of Burlington, Colorado. My topics here at the High Plains Ag Expo has been onboard technologies, starting with auto track turn automation, which allows us to make that consistent, repeatable turn every single time, whether they are in a tractor or combine. Some new features that were coming out for auto track turn automation, the header raise and lower function for combines. In my area, auto track turn automation has really taken off, not necessarily because of, due to the lack of experience of operating but more that they just have to pay attention to other aspects of their operation and it allows them to just manage other things better while they're still getting the task done perfectly every single time. For machine sync, they changed the functionality slightly. So in the past, when an adjustment was made by the combine operator or the grain cart operator, we changed the tracking status to acquire and that confused several grain cart operators. So what they did now is that if your adjustment is less than 24 inches, four and a half or 0.4 inches laterally, it will continue to say tracking instead of acquiring. They also added the advanced antennas so that you can have connection to your leader machine regardless of where you are throughout the field. Machine sync in my area has really taken off over the last few years, primarily due to the lack of experienced grain cart operators. And with that, it really just makes it simpler for them. All you have to do is just press a button. Anybody, regardless of age or their technical abilities, can run machine sync. All of these features are available on your Gen 4 or G5 display, as long as you have an Automation 4.0 license for your Gen 4s or an advanced license for your G5s. If you have any interest in any of these onboard technologies, get with your local Precision Ag Consultant and we can help you out. Well, my name is Austin Birkin. I'm a Precision Ag Consultant out of Cheyenne, Wyoming. I'm going to be talking today about you know, the Harvest Lab 3000 and how we can use it in multiple applications. So most of us are pretty familiar with the Harvest Lab 3000 on a chopper where it can raid your starch and your uh, dry matter materials. A bunch of different nutrient levels, things that you're wanting to find out for your feed quality of forage. You can be able to get your feed quality, so maybe instead of putting on a ton in this feed wagon today, maybe you only needed three quarters of a ton of weight because it had higher nutrient value in it, so you maybe can put in some other roughage. The other thing you can be able to use these on a combine, to be able to read protein, starch, fiber content inside your commodity crops, and then also you can use it in a turntable setting, so if you have a feedlot or a dairy, you can be able to check your rations and be able to do a total mix ratio, get the correct amount of nutrients for your cattle to be able to achieve what you're truly trying to do. The amount of data that you can get from this is astronomical. There is a ton of data. It's probably more than you really ever want, but at least if you have data, you can be able to make better informed decisions. And then also you can use it for manure. That's a little bit less well-known thing. So what Deere has done with the manure application of the Harvest Lab 3000 is you're wanting to put on quality, not quantity. 
So you can be able to set your limits on this and say, I want 50 pounds of nitrogen put on there. It'll strive to put 50 pounds of nitrogen all across your field, but it might be putting on 10,000 gallons to do that or a thousand, just depending on the quality of your manure you're using that day. So while you're going through the field doing stuff like this, that is instantaneous. But if you're gonna be using it on a turntable, you can be able to analyze a ration real quick, about two minutes, and it stores all that information on a computer so you can keep it for your records or be able to share it with your nutritionist too. With all this data, like the main things that guys are really using it for is like for in manure, that way they're putting on the right amount of nitrogen. They're not over applying or under applying. And then also they can minimize the amount of info application they have to do too, because they don't need as many nutrients. They know what they have in that field already. Hi, I'm Mark Peterson. I've retired from John Deere, spent 27 years in the field with John Deere. Stand here in front of the R500 head, in front of this W260 windrower. This head is where the magic happens for the new John Deere windrowers. So what this head does is it has four tasks. It's got to cut, it's got to converge, it's got to condition, and it's got to form the windrow. We can take care of all that and treat the hay very gently through the entire process. The best hay a customer has is in front of this windrower. As soon as that windrower hits it, no matter what windrower it is, we're gonna inflict damage on that crop. It's our job to treat that crop as gently as we can to get it cut, converged, conditioned, and put in a windrow that's gonna allow it to dry as quickly as possible. This head does that job extremely well. The key to running this head is to run it as level as possible. So we're not trying to push material uphill. So I want to run it as level as possible and run my knife speed at the appropriate level, which for this head, 2050 is probably the ideal spot to start an alfalfa, 2300 if you're running it in a grass type crop, cane, things like that, that's where I'd start. The idea is to run these knives just fast enough so they stay fully extended. If the knives start to fold back, I may leave uncut strips of crop that will be under the windrow and you won't see them until you pick the crop up. If I run it too fast, We'll end up with too much recut and it'll be chopped up salad looking stuff on the side of the windrow. So running your knife speed is critical on this windrow or any windrower out there on the market. Beauty of this windrower starts with this cross auger on the back. That helps feed the conditioner evenly all the way across that windrower so that we're not putting more material through the corners, less in the middle. This one with that cross auger with its aggressive flighting that comes in beyond the end of the conditioner and the aggressive accelerators in the middle helps feed that conditioner evenly across the whole width of the, the windrow. If I pick up crop that comes through this, this conditioner, it doesn't matter where I pick it up on the right side, center, or left side, it's gonna be conditioned the same no matter where I pick it up out of that, that windrow. A couple things to keep in mind if you are running this head, there's a stripper on top of this auger. That needs to stay within one eighth of an inch of that auger in order to provide optimal efficiency on moving that crop to the condition. If it gets too wide of a gap, it can wrap around that auger and give you an auger slip warning. This head has our V10 conditioners in it, which is our best all crop, all condition conditioner. We do also offer three other conditioners. We have urethane, our trilobe, and an impeller conditioner that are available. The trilobe excels in alfalfa. Best conditioner out there for alfalfa gives you a crush type condition on the entire length of the stem. If you pick up a stem of alfalfa that's been through the trilobe, you'll think it wasn't conditioned until it goes into wilt and a dark line will appear on the length of that stem. That's that water coming out of that stem. It'll give you the best quality, quickest dry down in alfalfa. It's not the best in grass type crops. You will lose some capacity out of the machine if you put a grass type crop in front of it. We have our urethane conditioner, which provides you a, a crust type condition as well, and our impeller conditioner, which is great in short meadow type hay crops, but is not ideal for alfalfa. If you are interested in learning more about this windrower, contact 21st Century. Any of the salespeople there can give you all the information you need to help make the best hay crop possible.